So Stefan Sagma, it would be really nice if you could shortly introduce yourself and your role here at Ink Talks in India. Sure. So my name is Stefan Sagmeister. I'm an Austrian designer who lives and works in New York. I have a small studio uh, there called Sagmeister Watch and I'm uh, right now here in Kochi in India uh, being what is called a co-chair, but basically, you know, uh, hosting, uh, co-hosting uh, one session uh, here at Inc. Uh, that obviously, uh, considering that's my profession and my expertise, uh, is about design. So you were here last year. I, I don't know the years before, if you've been here before. No, I've been here the last year, but I've known Lakshmi since a very long time, since we both had uh, gone to TED for a Yeah. So what fascinates you about India? I, I assume there has to be something when you're coming back for the second time, besides the conference itself. What is it? Well, I would think that, uh, you know, all the cliches are in... Uh, as they sadly often are, uh, somewhat true. So uh, I, of course, being a short-term visitor to India, still very much stay on the surface of things. So, you know, I've been here a number of times, but always in the context of conference. Uh, the reason that I come back to this one, at the center of that reason is Lakshmi, because she's a very warm, very loving person that... Uh, I enjoy being connected with. Uh, number two would be that I've seen Ink doing really well, as in being able to uh, attract speakers as well as audience members uh, who are smart and interesting and who are uh, by and large uh, able to stay for the full time. It's another advantage of doing a conference that's far away from the usual centers like, you know, New York, San Francisco, London, and so on, because people actually stay there because it came so far. And then, of course, the country itself, uh, that, uh, you know, when I arrived yesterday, but so the, the, the only real sense of India I got uh, today in the morning for a morning walk, just being around uh, the crazy uh, streams of people and vehicles uh, that come from everywhere in a cliche, the crazy colors, the, of course, as a graphic designer, unbelievable trucks and it's, uh, and the custom build-ups that they have. Uh, the, uh, the buses, the tuk-tuks, the taxis, uh, that's in the day and a half that I've been here, probably the most Indian impression uh, that I've had, uh, outside of the wonderful and totally nutty rainfall that caught us uh, while on the morning walk. Do you draw any kind of inspiration out of India for your work? Or is well, it just... Right now it's too early, meaning on this trip it's just too early to say. No, I mean in general, yesterday. you've been here a couple of times, as you said. Yeah. Uh, I think that, that uh, there's probably some sort of Baroque influence that came from Europe to, to India, that uh, we, through extensive use of modernism, have pretty much exercised and uh, that in turn influences some of our studios work. Just the incredible fullness, the idea that more is more, the, the, the idea that more is in fact more, mm -hmm. that you can always put something else on top of it and it actually becoming stronger, not weak. I myself uh, have for a while now thought that the entire idea of German-Austrian modernism is way, way, way past its due date, important in the 1920s, and even then it had its flaws, even its originating, even the originating ideas at the, at the Bauhaus were already extremely flawed, but now, a hundred years later, after this has been the status quo in basically architecture, communication design, product design, 
its uh, lost almost all of its power and is propagated mostly out of the laziness of humanity because we've been doing it for so long now and it turned out that it's fairly cheap and functional to do that that has been the status quo but I think that ultimately pure functionality is not only not what we want as humans if you look at something like uh, the hand axe uh, you know, the, the, the tool that we used for the longest time, even before we were humans, it is a it's a perfect symmetry, it's a thing of beauty. So even before we were humans, we took beauty very seriously. And the fact that in the last hundred years we were only after function in the West seems to be leading down the wrong path for me. And I think that in that way, uh, a lot of the design that I see here is still very much bothered with ornament and very much bothered with it just looking gorgeous. Uh, for surely from a of course from a, a point of view of color, but also from a point of view of form. And uh, I you know, having been born in Austria, of course, also had a very long phase in my design life where I thought that beauty wasn't very interesting. Where I thought that making stuff look good is somehow a surfacey or cheap affair. And I think I was wrong. And I think that it's really uh, that the desire to make something look good is not about the surface, it's about touching something in us that is deeply human and in many cases it's an essential part of the function. So how does this challenge your work, what you just say? Well, we've, uh, we've uh, incorporated these kind of thoughts into our work uh, since a long, since a while. So there's been a, uh, I mean, I can't say that all of these influences came out of my visits to India. Of course, yeah. Uh, but obviously, if you look at uh, the, uh, the development of Indian patterns, the, the development of Indian details, both historic from Mughal paintings, yeah. but it translates all the way up to to, uh, uh, to movie posters. Uh, there's probably some of the, the few worlds in the 20th century, end of 20th, beginning of 21st century, where baroque form was really executed well. Uh, and yeah, I mean, we've been incorporating it in our work uh, uh, in, in many, many cases, from posters that, that don't look to minimize things, but look to maximize things, uh, all the way to uh, exhibits that work in many, many layers, that they are, uh, that we try to talk to audiences that might have 10 minutes time to go through, to audiences that might have be able to spend an hour, but also yeah. to audiences that might be able to spend the day in that same room. Uh, what made you feel that you go down the wrong path, as you mentioned earlier? Not just experience. Uh, there was one key uh, development where I went to two conferences at the same time. One was in Lisbon. Uh, taking place in a castle, a military, a medieval military uh, construction. And I was going to, from there to Memphis, Tennessee, speaking at a uh, convention center there. And the castle, the military building, had, uh, was gorgeous, 
It had every, it had every uh, doorknob got sizzled, even the cannons themselves, even though it was from the Dark Ages, from the Middle Ages. Hard uh, to imagine. Were, uh, were uh, uh, beautifully uh, exercised and form played a role throughout the entire building. And I went to the convention center, a center that you could arguably say that it would need to other than housing a convention, it would also have to be able to talk, tell you something about the, the nature of Memphis, about its culture. Uh, it would want to make, it would have to be designed in a way that it makes you come back to Memphis or get to know me uh, more of Memphis. But none of that, it was pure functionality. When you looked around, there was, you couldn't see a single thing that you suspected their beauty or form played any role in the decision that it was made this way. It was pure function, and in there, in its pure functionality, completely non-functional. Because many of the functions that you would expect from a convention center, it, it just didn't perform, it just didn't do them. And so, uh, that question of how we got from the, the dark Middle Ages, that celebrated beauty in this castle to the ice cold to, to the enlightened 21st century uh, and this awful convention center definitely stuck in my mind. So you somehow say we have to enrich functionality or we, to, we have to enrich design work in a way that it's not only functional, right? I would say, I would say that we have to take beauty more seriously. That brings it to the point. Where are there any restrictions? Where does beauty end? Nowhere. 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 And you know, I can give you a good example from re recently. Let's say something that that many communication designers always argue has to be completely functional is the, the little sheet in the airplane that tells you where the exits are. Well, uh, a couple of years ago, Virgin Atlantic designed that sheet really beautifully, made it more human, brought a little fun into it, made, the, made proper illustrations, not just the little man icons. Yeah. And see, if you, if you are in a Virgin flight next time you are, check it out. Suddenly, a lot of people are checking that sheet out because it's fun to check it out. Mm -hmm. And while if you are in any other airline, nobody checks out that sheet where the exits are. So the supposedly functioning sheet that tells you everything in the most functional iconic way doesn't work at all. It might work in a, it might work in the meeting where they designed it or where the client signed off on it, but in real life where it's supposed to work in the aeroplane, it doesn't work because it's too boring. And I think that, that is the case with so much modernism. It works in a meeting room and at the end Countless corporate brochures, if I talk, countless corporate websites are totally ignored because of the coldness of their design. So you just compared beauty with some kind of, you know, having fun. What else does beauty mean for you? Did I just compare beauty? Mm. I, that, I that hope you I did do not do that. Because that you do have fun things. or that you do like, you know, to take it out, look at it, that it's really fun working with it, stuff like this. How would you define or what does, what does beauty mean for you? What does it stand for? Does it something which has to touch your heart or your soul? What? I think ultimately that it's delightful for a human being. Okay. Uh, we are here at Inc. Uh, we started like this. Let's end like this. So, what what makes Inc. here so special for you? Well, I hope I mentioned it. Uh, uh, it's a it's a, uh, a fantastic mixture of smart people in the audience and up on stage. And because it's because most people who are here came from somewhere else, they're all staying. If I go to a conference in uh, New York or London, uh, nobody stays. Everybody does their talk and they're gone again. And in an, uh, uh, in a situation like this. 
I think there is a much more opportunity to really interact with one another. Thank you. You're welcome. Excellent.